Hey, I'm Justin with VinCraft, and I'm here to show you how to put together one of these Chinese three-head machines. Because they sure as hell don't come with any instructions. So I got a request to put together one of these three-head machines that come imported from China. And I gotta say, putting this thing together is really disappoints me in many ways. Just from the construction, the quality, and everything else. And just for the sheer fact that it doesn't come with instructions, that's rather disappointing but one of the most basic things these machines should come with if they're brand new are a set of instructions this one didn't and i'm pretty sure this other one i'm going to put together will not either because i have two machines to put together this is the first one i went through it just to make sure i knew what i was doing and lo and behold i pretty much had to go by my mechanics instinct to put this thing together fortunately the big parts are together it's mostly just putting the heads on the stand but I went through a little bit more just to kind of explore and look into the machine. And I, like I said, when you see what I went through for some of this stuff, you'll start to regret buying one of these if you have already. If you haven't, again, I recommend staying away and potentially looking for something either used that's a nice American made or Canadian made machine, or just finding something of just better quality in general. So as you can see, the box is a little beat up, and that's because it's been shipped from overseas. But it's also been sitting for a while. That's why it's a little bit extra beat up. But let's open it up and see what comes inside. So, the base plate. Of course there's no handhold so the stand is in here too. There it is. Yeah, I'm not good at unboxing. So as you can see, the major part of it's already put together, the three heads. Now all you gotta do is put the stand together and put the three heads on the stand. And that's not terribly hard. So the obvious first thing to do is pull it out of the plastic. So as you can already see, the great build quality and packing care that this machine went through. Fortunately, this is where the head goes, and you're not going to see this once it's assembled, but this just kind of tells you the quality you're dealing with already. Now I pull these guys out. So if you look, the bolts have a countersink to them, but the place plate doesn't have a countersink. I don't know why they did that. So I like using one of these bolts to help me line up the first part of the stand here. Another unfortunate issue you'll run into is with these threads. When they go and powder coat or paint these parts, they don't think to cover up the threads and that can gum up the bolts. So be aware of that. If it starts feeling tight, that's probably why. So as you're tightening down, just kind of be aware. Tighten a little bit. If it still feels like it wants to go, keep going. But if you feel it stop and not really want to go again without all kinds of effort, immediately stop. You may have to chase the thread. So the next thing I like to do is take these heads apart. And the first thing you'll notice when you do that is, of course, you need the keys. And it comes with three sets of keys. These two sets both do the top. So you can see this key is quite unique, and you think this would be something very hard to pick or even bounce. But no, trust me, these keys are just as easy to decode as anything else. This does the change box. And something interesting, I think these keys are all keep the same too. So throwing back to my previous video, this key may work on all Chinese machines. And that's something I would also warn you against on buying one of these machines. And looking at the key design, they are the same. So if you buy a Chinese machine, change your locks. They're all the same. And as you can see, they're not very good keys either.
Now that they've got these out, me personally, I would throw these away. But since this is not my machine, I'm going to advise my customer to throw these away. That was loud. Now that we've gotten this far, it's not a bad time to actually check and see if the coin mechanisms are working. So take out your test quarter and just run the machine. As you can see, uh, these things are so bad. As I said, these coin mechanisms aren't great to begin with. Now, the third one here, I've run into a couple of problems. This one's not doing it, but on this machine, ah, I almost did it there. The quarter will kick out and sideways and caught up and get caught up in the hopper. As you can see in this close-up, you can see it's completely stuck. So you have to reach in and bounce the machine, and that's how most of these machines actually break. When the coins get stuck like that, these machines will just overfeed and finally just break apart because it's trying to force quarters in when it can't. I potentially have a fix for that though, but I want to experiment with it before I show it on video. So that may be the next one, it may be a few down the line, but I believe there is a fix for this. And it just comes from a really poor hopper design. And here's a really killer thing. Remember in that coin mech video, I was saying most of the Chinese machines might be more like the acorn than the beaver. I actually found that these are more like a beaver. Obviously they're a much more simplified, but they are more like a beaver mech from actually every piece down. They just use some really low quality parts and the main gear, the gear that drives your dispensers here, is plastic. And I just don't, I don't think that's a wise choice. And going back to the hoppers, those are also plastic. That's part of the reason why the quarter gets stuck. It's because it's got enough force to go down and get stuck and actually jam against that plastic hopper because it has just a little bit of movement. But enough complaining, let's get down to putting this machine together fully now that i've got the machine onto the stand it's now time to line up the bolt holes that are located inside here and this can be a little tough because again it's not the greatest quality in the world but they do roughly line up as with anything you want to hand thread as a start now what i do from here is i can drop my socket here because this is just a 10 millimeter socket a little too tight but there we go now the final bolt as you can see is located under the dispenser hopper if you have no experience with the wrench there is a proper way of using one at least an open end box in. For speed, you use the open end first, like so. And then when you're ready to actually apply some torque, you use the box in. Now, in the case of a gumball machine, you're really not going to experience it. But the reason you use the box in is that as you put torque on the wrench against the fastener, this open end has a tendency to spread out. Again, most candy machines are not going to have this issue. Again, the proper way to do it, you start with the open end, then move over to the box end when you're ready to torque it down. Next step is to install the heads back on. And when you do install these, be sure you put these in the right direction. They can go roughly in any direction, but will only fit correctly when the coin mech lines up with the front of the machine. And you can tell the front of the, of the machine by these three little bars here. Now you want to put your top on and the key thing to remember on the top is that the short side goes forward so the short side goes towards where the candy dumps out and again it's a thing that can be put on backwards but it won't fit quite right so again short side going forward the long side going towards the rear now when you put your key in here 
it doesn't hurt to hurt, turn it one or two times towards the left to loosen it and then tighten it up. What that does is that allows the thread to match up to the key so you don't strip it out. Trust me, this thing doesn't need any more help on that. And just for the sake of OCD, I do try and get the keys going in the same direction. It just helps. Now the final thing I do before I send off any machine to a customer is to make sure the machine is working. So, we pop our quarter in. Heard that the first one worked. And of course the second one doesn't work because guess what? It's experienced a hopper issue. There it goes. Again, I think I have a solution for that, but we have to wait for my next video. Again, just a word of advice, don't buy this machine. Well, that's it guys, these two machines are done, this video is done. Again, if you're thinking about buying these machines, these Chinese built machines, don't. Don't waste your money, they're not worth it. Bad build quality, no instructions, cheap parts, and the same keys between two machines, that's a no-go for me. Now, I'm still gonna give this to the customer because he still wants them, but I'm gonna give him a list of recommendations too to fix these machines. So you kind of see that you get a cheap machine, but you may have to pay more in parts to make these perfect. So that's it for the moment. I'll see you in the next one. And again, I'm Justin from VinCraft, and thank you for watching. So if you want more from VinCraft, hit subscribe. Otherwise, check out these other videos.